Hello everybody and welcome to my very first card review for the new Mean Streets of Gadgetzan expansion for Hearthstone which has just been announced at BlizzCon. We've been given a few cards to, um, as a preview and I'd like to go through them and see what I think they will mean for the future of Hearthstone. Let's start off with Come the Forgotten King, a legendary druid card which I think is a truly exciting card. It's pretty damn unique and I think effectively in Constructed it will be a free card. With Fandral, it's a 7-7 gain 10 armor for free and combined with Aviana it's basically game breaking. You can play as many cards as you want. You can fill up the board with the strongest minions you can possibly put in your deck. Um, in Arena it won't quite be as powerful as it is in Constructed but if played when you have another strong card in hand, it can make for a powerful turn. Otherwise, a 10 mana 7-7 seven, seven, gain 10 armor in Arena, that's still not too bad. I'm going to give it an A- in Constructed, and Arena, a B+. And next we have a spell for Druids, Lunar Visions. Draw two cards, minions drawn cost two less. Um, in Constructed, we already have a 5 mana draw three cards with the option of ramping up mana instead. So that's already a more flexible card. Um, now this one, five mana, draw two cards. It sounds terrible, but in a minion heavy deck, it could technically be useful. In arena, card draw is very valuable and you are more likely to have a minion heavy deck. Um, if lacking on card draw, don't count this card out. So in arena, certainly a little better. Constructed, I'm giving it a C. Arena, a B-. Moving on to Pilfered Power, gain an empty mana crystal for each friendly minion. And there's plenty of opportunity for this card to replace Wild Growth. With cards like Wild Growth and Haunted Creeper, gaining 2-3 to three empty mana crystals could be fairly easy and extremely valuable. We also don't know exactly what this will do at 10 mana, um, I assume it will provide the excess mana card draw. Um, but in that case, um, a 3 mana draw 1 card is not very good in the end game. Um, in Arena, Wild Growth is, a less powerful, is less powerful and uh, this probably will be as well. Even if used correctly to gain 2 or 3 mana, skipping a turn can give up valuable board space and without the card draw to keep up, you might just end up with an empty hand at some point. So, Constructed, given it a B plus, certainly has potential to be a very po powerful card in ramping up. Arena, C minus, not so good. Next we have Lotus Agents, and this is our first new look at the multi-class cards. So, Lotus Agents will be playable in Druid, Rogue, and Shaman, and to discover a Druid, Rogue, or Shaman card. Um, I mean, technically, this is a slightly worse Ethereal Conjurer, which is 5 mana 6-3. Um, but this will definitely find its way into some decks. But until we see how these multi-class cards work in play, they don't. this doesn't seem to have the highest value. However, in Arena, the Discover mana mechanic is fantastic. And so while a 5 mana 5-3 is nothing to get excited about, discovering a class card while putting some power on the board is pretty damn good. So constructed B minus. We'll see it in some decks, but it certainly isn't broken. And uh, arena B plus. It's a good card. Next is Mark of the Lotus. Give your min minions plus one, plus one. A one mana Power of the Wild. Sounds pretty good. Power of the Wild has the option to summon a three two, and has Spandrel Synergy. But in most cases, Mark of the Lotus will be a better card. In arena, arena, it's the same thing, and even if it's only used to buff one minion, one mana plus one plus one still isn't that bad. So Mark of the Wild, Mark of the Lotus, sorry, the new Mark of the Wild, A minus in Constructed, A minus in Arena. We're gonna see it a lot. The Piranha Launcher, a new weapon for Hunter. Now, if this was four mana, I would consider this card okay, but it's five mana. It's only two attack, and you know, its text isn't that powerful. It's going to be a 1 1 piranha each time you attack. I can't see it being effective 
The 1-1 one, one Piranhas are only relevant with Beast Synergy. 5 mana deal 10 damage, only 2 damage per turn? No thank you. In Arena, you know, weapons are good, but we already have Eaglehorn Bow and Glaive Zooka. They're both decent weapons and preferable to this. Even Gladiator's Longbow is better with its more expensive, explosive power and immunity while attacking. So, Constructed D, Arena D+. You know, uh, in Arena, only if your other two cards are really terrible and you have no other weapons in your deck. Next is another multi-class. Um, this one's for Hunter, Paladin, and Warrior. It's the Grime Street Informant. It's another Discover card, and it is a 1-1. One, one. So basically, it's a new version of the Jeweled Scarab, but it loses the Beast Synergy that Jeweled Scarab has, but it does guarantee a class card, uh, which makes it relevant. You know, it's not great, but it's relevant. Um, Arena, getting an extra class card is always good in Arena, and putting a 1-1 one, one on the board may at least waste an opponent's hero power or one of their minions attacks so constructed b minus arena b not a bad card next is possibly one of the most exciting cards that were revealed to us kazakis i guess it's pronounced mage priest and warlock will get this card battle cry if your deck has no duplicates create a custom spell so similar to like a combination of reno jackson and Arc Reef Rafam, um, except this card gives the player a lot of choice. Also, it appears to have no RNG, but a lot of flexibility. The opportunity, this gives you the opportunity to make mistakes, but also to win games. And I think it's gonna take a bit of practice before this card is perfected and mastered by players. Um, in Arena, you know, just as a warning, you have to make sure you have no duplicates before you play this card, but uh, if you couldn't draft Flame Strike or Light Bomb, then this card's got you covered, um, along with a number of other possibilities. Not to mention bouncing this back to your hand would be pretty damn cool. So Kazakis constructed. I'm giving it an A. Arena, A minus. That's if you have no duplicates in your deck. So always be aware of that in Arena. Next is the Manic Soulcaster, a mage minion, battle cry, choose a friendly minion and shuffle a copy into your deck. Constructed, there are so many possibilities here, you can get an extra copy of a legendary, any other kind of powerful minion, this also helps battle fatigue a little bit, you know, one extra card in your deck, plus it's a 3 mana 3-4, three, so, I mean, that's pretty decent value right there, it won't be in every deck, but it will be extremely powerful in some. In Arena, it's a spider tank with decent text, so it's pretty hard not to choose this one in Arena. Constructed and given it a B plus in Arena, it's an A. The Cabal Courier, another multi-class for Mage, Priest, and Warlock. This might be the best of the multi-class Discover cards we've gotten so far. So, it may find its way into some decks, but it won't be too common in the meta, I don't think. But in Arena, the Discover card is going to be better once again, and I think I think it'll be a pretty easy pick. So Constructed B- minus and Arena B+. Plus. Next we have the Paladin Legendary, Wicker Flame Burn Bristle. So, 3 mana, 2-2, two, two, Divine Shield and Taunt, damage dealt by this minion also heals your hero, and it's also good to see that it doesn't matter if this card attacks or not, it's just any damage dealt by him heals your hero. It's not the strongest legendary, but it certainly has some potential that's clearly meant to be buffed to provide actual substantial healing, otherwise it wouldn't be too exciting. In Arena, it's an okay card, certainly not a win condition that many other legendary cards can be. So I mean, constructed C+, I think we have to see how this works out. There's certainly some synergy with other Paladin cards, but nothing that seems to make this too worth it yet. Arena, B-, it's an okay card. Next is Small Time Recruits for Paladin, draw three one-cost minions from your deck. So here we go, a Paladin aggro card that could certainly find its use in Constructed, 
but really it's a 6 mana to play 3 1 drops. And that's if you even have 3 1 drops left in your deck. But at least it strengthens all future draws. You know, after you play this, you're probably not going to be worried about drawing 1 drops later. Um, in Arena, what are the chances you'll have 3 1 cost minions in your deck? Um, if you actually do, it's a decent card to help flood the board. Otherwise, it's kind of a waste. Giving it a C in Constructed and a D in Arena. The Bean Street Marshal, another Paladin, aggro card. Death Rattle if this minion has two or more attack, draw a card. So, another card that is certainly meant to be buff. This one can be right before it dies. Um, and one, when buffed, it's a one mana minion that draws a card. Card draw is extremely valuable and can't be underestimated. Um, so, we'll see. I think it could certainly find its way into some decks. In Arena, worst case, it's a one mana 1-2. One, if combined with Abusive, Dark Iron Dwarf, Shattered Sun, any other buffs, it can be card draw. Awesome in Arena. So, depending on your deck, it could certainly be good. Constructed, I'm giving it a B. Arena, I'm giving it a B. Next is the Getaway Kodo, a new secret for Paladins. When a friendly minion dies, return it to your hand. Constructed, it has half the power of duplicate for a third of the cost. When played with the right minions on board, this can certainly be an effective secret, assuming death rattles are activated. We don't know exactly how this works, but I'm assuming at this point that when a minion dies, before this secret is activated, the death rattle is activated. But we'll see. In Arena, it's one mana card draw, effectively, and it can be played at a time when you will get a great minion back into your hand. That's good value. Constructed, I'm giving it a B. Arena, B+. Now we're getting to the Priest cards, which are very exciting. First off, we got Dragonfire Potion. Deal 5 damage to all minions except dragons. Finally, peace out to Excavate Evil. Oh man, Priest needed this. Powerful board clear is always good, both constructed and arena, giving it A and A minus respectively. Next we got the Draconide Operative. Man, Dragon Priest is going to be good after this expansion is released. If you're holding a dragon, discover a card in your opponent's deck, plus it's a 5 mana 5-6. Five, Man, quality drop, and the battle cry is fantastic. With Dragon Priest, this gives the player a peek into the opponent's deck while also giving you a copy of your favorite card of the three. That's pretty damn good. In Arena, worst case scenario, it's a five mana five six. Hey, Pit Fighter is a good card. And base case scenario, it's a five mana five six with this excellent battle cry. So, given that an A in Constructed and an A in Arena. Next we have the pint sized potion, give all enemy minions minus 3 attack this turn. Basically an anti-savage roar. And the priest buff continues, another quality card that can be used to make valuable trades, shadow word horrors, shadow word pains. And in arena, it's similar to constructed, but more a buff for making valuable trades. If both, mi if both players have 4 or so minions on the board, you play this and your minions can get some great trades. Giving an A minus in constructed and A minus in arena, another great card. On to the Cabal Talon Priest, pretty good card. Uh, and a constructed, it's nothing ridiculous, but it is good value. I don't think we'll see it in the absolute top decks in the game, but uh, certainly playable. And arena, it's an excellent card. Say goodbye to the Dark Cultist. This one's just better. So a B in constructed and A minus in arena. The Potion of Madness. Gain control of an enemy with two or less attack until end of turn? Well, this card will be the conclusion to the Priest buff for now. But think about this. Shadow Madness costs three extra mana more. And the minions it gets only need to have one more attack. So this is pretty damn good. Um, for one mana, it will always have good value. But will it have room in your deck with all the other great priest cards? It's tough to tell. Um, in Arena, 
This is basically fork lightning with no overload, and it's a pretty easy pick. It's a B plus in constructed, another A in arena. Priests might be tier one in arena after this. On to the Lotus Assassin, our first rogue only card. It has stealth, and whenever this minion kills an enemy, gain stealth. This card certainly has potential. If buffed, it can make surprising value trades and then escape an easy counter by your opponent. And in Arena, it's basically just a better Stranglethorn Tiger. It's not a beast, but it will trade really well. So, hey, constructed score B, Arena B+. Next we have the counterfeit coin. Screw you, Rogue, as if you needed this. There's way too much possibility. You can use, use for combos, ramping, there are so, there's just so many ways the rogue can use this to really create a powerful board or just gain lethal. Um, in Arena, an extra coin may help you for one turn, but it could also be a terrible draw later in the game. This is certainly a great card for Constructed, giving an A. Uh, I don't even know if I like this being in the game, um, but in Arena, it's a C-, minus. it really isn't that great. Next is a warrior card, Discover a Taunt Minion. Well, for one, mi for one mana, that ain't good, it ain't bad, I mean, it's nothing exciting, not really much to talk about. Arena, it's okay, uh, there will be times when it's the best of the three cards you're presented with, so we'll see it in Arena a little bit. So, giving it a C- minus and Constructed, and a C plus in Arena. Finja, the Flying Star, our first neutral legendary, Stealth. Whenever this attacks and kills a minion, summon two Murlocs from your deck. Well, so first off, this has to be in a Murloc deck. Um, and it's certainly an interesting card, especially if it can, if this card can kill more than one minion. I mean, that's going to be really good value. However, not many decks will have more than a few Murlocs in their deck after turn 5. Um, in Arena, if you draft a ton of Murlocs, it can be pretty good, but otherwise, it's really terrible. It's a 5 mana 2 4. So, constructed to B, Arena to D. Patches the Pirate as Church! After you play a Pirate, summon this minion from your deck. Alright, it could have some cool Pirate synergy with South Sea. Maybe some gang up action. I think that's what they showed in BlizzCon. Uh, there's certainly some potential here for explosive power. And Arena. If you are able to play another pirate before drawing this one, you get an extra 1-1 one, one with charge. Chances you can then do something with that are low, but hey, it's okay. Constructed B, Arena C-. The Wind Up Burgle Bot. Whenever this attacks a minion and survives, draw a card. Uh, we've seen this type of card before, and it doesn't work too well, really not exciting. You need to invest cards into this just so it will draw a card or two. So, in, in Arena also, it's not a good 6 drop. It's 5-5. Five, five. If you're way ahead, it could help you stay that way. But, overall, D in Constructed, C- in Arena. Let's move on. On to the Fell Orc Soul Fiend. At the start of your turn, deal 2 damage to this minion. Um... Hey, Priest gets another buff, right? This has some Purify value. In Arena, in a good scenario, it can trade into two other minions, but the fact that it can't stick is pretty sad. So, giving it a C in Constructed, B- in Arena. This card is... I don't think it would be too powerful. We got the Big Time Racketeer here, a 6-mana 1-1 one, one that summons a 6-6 six, six Ogre. This card is very interesting. For one... It can dodge secrets like Mirror Entity, Snipe, and Repentance. Plus it can be combined with Evolve, Shadow Step, Shadow Caster, or Bran for some seriously good value. But without a great combo, there are many other 6 drops that can be played alone with much more value. Um, in Arena, dodging secrets can be valuable. Plus it's totally a solid 6 drop. No problem with this in Arena. Constructed B, Arena B. Next we have the second rate bruiser, a taunt that costs two less if your opponent has at least three minions, but it's normally five mana. It's good to counter aggro and strong for taunt warriors, certainly, 
um, and arena it's pretty good value it's not too hard for your opponent to have three minions so this will be a three mana four five with taunt pretty often so construct them giving a b minus arena b plus next we have the kooky chemist with the battle cry swap the attack and health of a minion just like crazed alchemist but this one's a four mana four four instead of a two mana two two um, which makes it slightly better but still not good enough to see much constructed play. In Arena, this could certainly see some Arena action. Um, it's not quite as good as Dark Iron Dwarf, but it certainly has potential for powerful plays. C- in Constructed, B in Arena. Next we have the Friendly Bartender. 2 mana 2, 3 at the end of your turn. Restore 1 health to your hero. It's a decent value card for classes lacking healing. And in Arena, it's a good 2 drop. Good to combo with a weapon as well. Constructed to C plus in arena. It's a B. Next we get the Mistress of Mixtures. Death of Rattle restore four health to both players. One mana two two. Now th there's definitely an uh, opportunity to affect the meta here. Uh, maybe make its way into priest. Um, in arena, it's similar to Zombie Chow, and a strong one drop can really make a difference in a game. So constructed, I'm giving it a B. Arena B+. So, that's it for now. That's all the cards we've been shown. But I'm very excited to see what Blizzard shows us next for Hearthstone. And I think Mean Streets of Gadgeton is really going to change things up in the meta a lot. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.